Hi again. I want to talk to you about David, who is one of my real heroes. An extraordinary king. He's the only person in the entire Bible about whom it is said that he was a man after God's own heart. Now, what does that mean? I always wonder. What? Yo, David, what does it mean that you were a man after God's own heart? Well, what did David do? Yes, he was brave. He was loyal. He loved the Lord. What did he do? He wrote poetry. He wrote poetry, psalms, love poems to God. In fact, David is the reason we have the book of Psalms. 73 of the 150 psalms are attributed to David. In the Talmudic literature, the rabbis maintain that David's was the sweetest voice in all of Israel. And so all 150 psalms are to be heard by David singing. Do you realize that even though David was from 900 BCE, so nearly 3,000 years ago, he taught us how to pray to God? He gave us the words. He gave us the permission. He had this, this freedom, this, this love for God and all that, all that God represented. And so God made him, when you think about it, the first Messiah. The word Messiah, Messiah means anointed. So uh, David was anointed as the true king. Saul is another tragic story. The king. He really is the first Messiah. And as what happens later, you see it in the prophets, that out of David's uh, progeny will come the true Messiah, Jesus, for us Christians. The second Messiah. David is the first Messiah. Okay, so David loved the Lord. Uh, and I, if there's time, I'd love to read some of the positive psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Wow, that's David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's David. However, most of you know the story of David and Bathsheba. Here he is, everything's going cool, and Bathsheba, who apparently was quite beautiful, decides to have a bath on her roof, and the king can sit there and watch her have a bath. Well, things being what they are, he invited her over and they had relations. Okay. Well, her husband Uriah was off fighting a war. and Uriah was a true blue Israelite. So she goes back and then lets him know, hey, I'm pregnant. Uh-oh. She's a married woman. There'd be disasters for the king, the adultery. Adultery is forbidden, very, very serious in Israel. So he has Uriah, the soldier, come home. Hey, Uriah, how do you have a few drinks? Hopefully to send him home so he'll have relations with his wife and cover the tracks of what's happened. But Uriah is following the understanding, which is you don't mess with your spouse when your other brothers are out there in battle. So he's a true blue guy. He spends the night there at the, at the, uh, the doorway of the king's quarters. Day two, he, he, uh, David tries it again, gets him drunk, but once again Uriah refuses to go to Bathsheba. So as far as uh, David's concerned, he has no choice, so he tells Joab, the army commander, okay, here's what you do. Go out to the battle and have everyone pull back. So Uriah is killed, and then let me know. Okay, so that's exactly what happens. And Joab lets him know Uriah is dead. So then, David reaches out and takes Bathsheba as one of his wives. Then things get really bad. Let me tell you that story in section two on David.